Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PG and GM. Praise God to get money back for the YouTube video. Bang your bag. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I know what time it is. The doctor's in the house. So today, man, I want to talk about, you know, the big fights that we have coming up this weekend, man. June 15th, good Lord willing, man, between Abdul Take Wahi, formerly known as Javante Take Davis versus Frank Martin, Tang versus Frank, yes, and David El Monstro Benavidez versus Alexander Vazdik, you know, and then, of course, on another car, which I don't know why they had it at the same time. But wait a minute. Wait Wait a minute. <laughs> we have Subra Matias versus Liam Paro, man. So we have some three big fights this upcoming weekend, man. But instead of taking the, the typical angle that most people take, I want to discuss who do we think has the best chance of completing the upset. Like, who do we think has the best chance to be upset this weekend, man? These are big fights, you know what I'm saying? Of course, a clear winner is... Who everybody anticipates to be the clear winner and the favorite is, of course, Tank uh, beating Frank. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have Benavidez beating Vazdek. Yeah. And, and Super Matias beating uh, uh, Liam Paro. So I want to first start off with Vazdek, man. I want to talk about who who has the best chance to score the upset, man. So Vazdek, Alexander Vazdek, man, you know, he, he's he's a very good fighter, uh, Ukrainian board fighter. Um, he, he He's... He only has one loss, right? And his one loss is to Better BF, Arthur Better BF, who we know is a uh, is a great champion at light heavyweight. You know what I'm saying? An undefeated fighter who who knocked out all of his opponents. And the thing about Bozic is, you know, he's a very good boxer. His highlight of his career, uh, his most notable win, is is probably against Adonis um, Superman Stevenson. He knocked him out in the 11th round, and unfortunately, um, Adonis, due to this uh, uh, his his fight with Bozic, he suffered uh, um, a, a chronic brain injury, you know what I'm saying? He, 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 he suffered a brain injury due to being punched on by Vazdik, you know what I'm saying? And um, he's still living through that right now, you know, to this day. And, um, you know, and Vazdik, when he did, and the way that he beat Adonis Stevenson was that, you know, not only did he have punching power, but he also put on a boxing clinic. You know, he's a very good boxer. Um, and it, it was a good fight. I thought it was a good fight. But, you know, Vazdik was clearly the better boxer in that outfit. And even against Better BF, Better BF, you know, he's an underrated boxer, but he's still a good boxer as well. And, and, and Vazdik was winning the fight until he got stopped in the 10th round. I believe he's dropped three times in the 10th. He was stopped and he was actually winning on two of the judges scorecards. Two of the three judges, uh, had, uh, had, had, uh, Vazdik winning at the time of stoppage. Uh, so, you know, Vazdik is a very capable fighter, strong fighter. The only thing about him is that, you know, after he lost to Vazdik, I believe, I mean, after Vazdik lost to Better BF in 2019, he took a four year hiatus, you know, and he came back in, uh, uh, uh he came back in, um, 2023 and he went on a three fight win streak you know uh, so right now he's currently on a three fight win streak going into the fight against Benavidez um so those those are his pros you know he's been in there with the best best of them and he's performed you know and and, and he beat Adon Stevenson who was undefeated undefeated at the time undefeated uh, the Haitian born Canadian undefeated uh, champion at light heavyweight at the time uh, but I will say that the the cons with Vazdek is that you know he did have that time off and then so we don't know how he's going to perform against top competition because we know what David Benavidez brings to the table. Now, I will say this, though. David Benavidez is moving to light heavyweight for the first time, but everybody anticipates him to be very comfortable in, 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 at this weight division because, you know, it's, it's, it's well known that uh, that uh, that he comes in pretty heavy. Some people call him weight bully. Yeah. You know, call it whatever you want. But some people accuse him of being a weight bully, and he even missed weight habitually before, uh, um, multiple times. So I, I, I fully anticipate uh, Benavidez to be very comfortable at this weight. You know, he has um, um, a past uh, uh, sparring sessions with a great like Dimitri Bivol and stuff like that. So he should be acclimated to the weight. But we'll see, though. You know, and um, so I, I, I do think those are the pros and cons with Vazic. You know, he's he's going in against somebody who's not proven at that weight, but we anticipate him to be fully acclimated to that weight, and we know the type of pressure and, and beating that 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 better be this breaks. He comes to beat you up. So now let's let's move on to um Subra Matias, uh the Puerto Rican fighter uh, going against the Australia fighter Liam Paro. Liam Paro, you know, um I would say for Liam Paro, man, he's a slick fighter. He's a he, he he's a slick fighter. Uh, we saw him win his most notable win is against Montana Love. Um, but this is and he's looked good. He looked good at all his fights, you know. Uh, he has an infamous bar session against Shakur, and I believe against uh, Devin Haney or was it Tank? I can't remember. Can't remember but uh, he performed well. He has a pretty good reputation. Uh, every time we see him, he looks good. Um, um, and uh, I will say that this is this is undoubtedly the biggest fight. 
of his of his career. We don't know how he'll perform, you know, uh, while he is a slick fighter. And we know that uh, Matias can get hit a lot. He does get hit a lot as Petros Ananian, as Ponce, you know, say, as uh, J- Jukabaya. Oh, wow. Everybody hits Matias. So he's there to be hit. It's just that a lot of times people try to go to war with him. So I think Leopardo will have to we'll have to avoid going to war with him and, 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 and avoid the co- constant and consistent trading and exchanging of punches because, you know, Subaru Matias, He's a heavy hitter. He has bricks in his hands and he, and he usually comes out victorious on that. But I do think that Liam Parle has the capability to do so. He can get in and out. He's quick. He's snappy. And, and, and he has, has some power too. Like I said, he beat Montana Love by stoppage. You know, Montana Love is a good fighter. Is he though? Out of America, you know. But I will just say this though. Liam Parle, you know, he only fought. He only fought twice outside of Australia. So while he does look good, this is, like I said, this is undoubtedly the biggest step up in competition for him. And I think that's indicative of him not really uh, leaving Australia. You know, it just shows you that, you know, he doesn't really have a big fight yet. Not saying you can't have big fights in Australia, but he just it just hasn't happened really yet. So with that being said, you know, him not being accustomed to a big fight like this of this caliber against a big opponent, you know, this, this is a very dangerous fight for Liam Parle. So we'll see how that goes. So those are the pros and cons of Liam Parle. Now let's get to Tank versus Frank. You know, we know what Tank brings. You know, he brings uh, uh, extraordinary boxing skill. Yeah. We know he brings extraordinary, phenomenal generational power at that division. Yeah. You know, uh, for, for his size. So we're going to talk about Frank the Ghost Martin. Frank the Ghost Martin is undefeated. Um, you know, Liam Parle is undefeated too. I don't know if I mentioned that, but, um, uh, Frank, the Ghost Martin's undefeated. You know, I will say that, um, you know, um, his, 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 his plus is that, you know, he, ha- he has had a big win before and he always comes in as an underdog mentality. He always has an underdog mentality. I remember his best win is against Michael Rivera, who I believe he dropped him in the seventh round. Um, uh, Michael Rivera, he was considered like the reincarnation of Ali. Bullshit! Bullshit! But mostly because of his appearance, right? He he kind of resembled him. Not saying that he had that he had that uh, he earned that yet, but you know he was on his way. He was twenty four and zero at the time. And Frank Martin is a very slick fighter. You know he went in there and dominated him. Looked very good throughout the twelve round uh, of that fight. And I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, he he, he they, th- that fight opened with Frank Martin as an underdog. You know, um, but then I think something I don't know what transpired along the way. But he became the favorite by the time they walked into the ring, the slight favorite. But yeah, I believe he started off as a slight underdog uh, when, when the fight was initially announced. and But yeah, but Frank Martin dominated the bigger fighter, Michael Rivera. Uh, he looked slick. He looked precise with his punches, getting in and out, going to the body, investing to the body very well. So he, he applied a strategy, which I thought was dope. And that's what you'll need against Tank. You cannot go in there all wild or reckless and just throwing punches willy-nilly because you will get caught. You will get set up with a trap, you know, because Tank is very good at that, you know. And uh, I just think that... Um, I think that Frank Martin is capable of doing so. I think his skill set is, is that that tank that a lot of people want to see tank against, you know, a, a slick fighter, a fighter that's going to think that's cerebral and is not just going in there trying to exchange punches or trying to walk him down and be predictable. So, and plus his coach is Derek James. So I think Frank Martin has a very good chance. You know, as far as the rankings go, he's the closest to tank's rank, um, um, uh, according to the official boxing rankings. So as far as the ranks go, he's definitely the highest cup, the strongest competition out of, out of these gentlemen. And I think that Frank Martin has a very good chance. I will say though, um, the plus side of him is that, like I say, he's, he's accustomed to being the underdog, being overlooked. So this is going to be his motivation. But the caveat is, you know, he looked very mediocre against Artem Honey Union, who will be fighting in Shakur Stevenson. He looked very mediocre in that fight. He did win, and I, I applaud him for that, but he didn't look as impressive as we anticipated. That's number one. And then number two, you know, Tank is definitely the best fighter that he's ever fought, you know, by, by leaps and bounds. Hey. <laughs> So, you know, and this is going to be the biggest stage. So you never know what those lights could do to you. You know what I'm saying? You never know what the nerves and the anxiety and stuff like that. You know, even though you, we might not admit it, but hell, I remember, shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm in the same caliber as with them, but I remember high school, every game, and you know what I'm saying? And even boxer, I box amateurly. Every, every time I sparred, you know, I get a little jittery, but it was good jitters though at the same time too. You know what I'm saying? So, but at this, at this, at this caliber, this level, you never know that nerves might not be good, you know, but I will say this also too. They do have a history, you know, they have a history and, and and, and according to the to the lore, you know, <laughs> that we've seen with their history of sparring, sparring doesn't mean everything. Sometimes it means nothing. But, you know, Tank said he has a brick hand. You know what that means? Brick hand means he hit hard. So he's been hit by him. You know, they had a little scuffle. They had a very interesting and intriguing and competitive sparring match, you know, that even got a little uh, physical outside the ring because of how competitive he was and intense it was. So, we you know, that day is, he, he kind of knows what he's dealing with. So with all that being said, uh, y'all let me know in the comments with who y'all think has the best chance of an upset. <laughs> Gotti! Gotti! 
You thought I was gonna let you know, huh? Nah, you let me know. Cause y'all be talking trash every time I every time I come up with a conclusion. Y'all let me know y'all conclusion. I just gave y'all the deets. You know what I'm talking about the details. And y'all let me know what y'all what y'all conclude, man. I, but for real, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all know in my opinion. I kind of feel like the worst chance of having an upset may be I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I think I think it's very tough. So y'all let me know in the comments. I think the best chance, objectively speaking, which we're always objective, I think the best chance of an upset on paper is probably Frank Martin. He probably has the best chance of an upset on paper. But in reality, I think Vosdick may have the best chance of an upset because I think he may be a little forgotten because he's been on a little hiatus and he's already accustomed to the weight. He was a heavy hitter. He was a major contender at the light heavyweight division. And even though we anticipate David Benavidez a monstro to come in with that pressure, come in looking dominant, come in to beat you up like he always does, I think that uh, uh, Vosdick is proven at that, at that weight class. It, his only his only blemish is against Artur Benerbiev, you know, and that's not bad at all. So uh, Liam Paro is is you know he's going he's right in the middle waters, you know what I'm saying? Like he could it could happen for him, or he could get whooped, you know. So we'll see how it goes. But y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. I appreciate y'all rocking with me as always, man. I'll catch y'all on the flip side. The doctor's out. Peace. From the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet. Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze. But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat. We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets.